Gawn da, da gyfeillion, uh, dwi'n falch iawn iawn o'r cyfle yma i'ch croesawu chi i lansiad byd bach, a dwi'n arbennig o'r falch o croesawu uh, prif nid o Cymru, Carwyn Jones, in Plythni. A very warm welcome to you all, and particularly to our First Minister, Carwyn Jones, who we're delighted to have here. Dwi'n siod diolch yfawr iawn i Carwyn am wneud ymdrech arbennig i ddod yma heddiw. Mae hefyd mae'n gyfnod ei thriadol o brysur, dwi'n gwybod arna chi, ac ar y llywodraeth i gyd. We know how much you've got on your plate at present, so we do appreciate very much indeed that you're with us today. And um, in thinking about the pressures that are on you with the financial cuts, we wish you every strength in standing up and defending Wales, as I know you and your government will be doing. A dyna ni'n falch fo chi'n agor yr arddangosfa arbennig yma byd bach sy'n rhedeg o hyn drwodd tan yr ail o ebryll. Mae'r arddangosfa yma yn un o gyfres o arddangosfa i dynnu wedi cael, a mae'r thema sy'n rhedeg trwy'r arddangosfa uh, presennol yn un yn ymwneud efo teithio, ac ydych chi wedi gweld llawer o'n o chi beth sydd yn yr arddangosfa ni'n falch iawn iawn o hynny. The exhibition in the Oriel Gregynog, which is one of the uh, great assets we have in the National Library, one of the great galleries uh, of Wales, um, is part of a series of uh, events that we've got linking in um, to uh, travelling, to the idea of the small world, and a world that is, of course, getting ever smaller. The National Library, of course, is not just about books. There's a terrific art collection here, as many of you are well aware. The photographic archive, one thinks of Jeff Charles's collection of over 100,000 uh, images. And uh, we hope to secure, um, at least play a part in getting the Philip Jones Griffith uh, archive uh, for Wales. Now, uh, mae gennym ni hefyd, wrth gwrs, archif sgrin a sain. A does ni yn gallu llwyddo i gael archif uh, ITV uh, uh, yma yng Nghymru, sy'n so hynny'n goblin o gam ymlaen. The National Library is the foremost institution in Wales dealing with family history. Our political archive, uh, as our First Minister well knows, is something that is uh, of great value. Ac mae'r gyfres o ddarlithoedd dyna ni wedi cael yma. Rhai ohonyn nhw, dros y wsnosau nesaf, yn cydlynu efo'r arddangosfa arbennig yma ar deithio. Yn ei hunan, rhywbeth yw erth wael. Today we had an excellent lecture lunch time. Glad to see Robin Gwyndaf um, with us this afternoon and stayed on for it. Um, one of a series. Next Friday we've got Jan Morris uh, along. Uh, a couple of weeks ago we had Roy, Roy Hattersley here. Um, we've got Howell Francis coming in a couple of weeks as well. Um, Beth Anguanas, Matthew Rhys about Patagonia. Hynny yw, mae gen o ni gyfres uh, o ddarlithoedd yn y drwm sy'n cydweddu efo'r arddangosfa. Mae hyn i gyd yn dod yn rhan o'r cyflwyniad dyn ni fel llyfrgell yn llwyddo i wneud. Gwrs, un o datblygiadau mawr yr oes ydy digido. Digitization of our printed works and other works is one of the great challenges of the age, and one in which our librarian, Andrew Green, has been a leader not only here in Wales, but throughout Britain and in the international world. And target ni ydi, ceisio sicrhau, fod y deunaw y cant o'r defnyddiau printiedig sy'n gynnon i fan hyn, yn y, y Gymraeg neu yn y Saesneg am Gymru, fod yn dod ar gael, dros y we, i bawb yn y byd, gallu gweld a dydi mewn iddo fo yn ddi dal. When the millions of people who now come through um, to our website are able to access all our printed work by a search word from anywhere in the world free of charge, then we will be one of the first nations that will have this facility available. And it's a tremendous uh, target to aim for. And we're very grateful for the £2 million provided by the National Assembly during the past year towards moving this programme forward. It's a great research tool and a great educational tool as well. But the theme is a deep bit back. The problem is, of course, digito. A mindani, but digito needs the bit to maintain its life. But how and how are they setting it up? We can now reach people in any part of the world. The world really is a small world as a consequence of this um, pr uh, uh, process that is moving forward. It brings the world to Wales, and it takes Wales to the world. 
and the Na National Library is therefore one of the leading portals for Wales in that interface with the world. It's a small world, it's a world that rests on all our shoulders, and I know that it rests also here in Wales on the shoulders of our special guest tonight. Carwin Jones and Well, uh, Dioch, uh, David, I'm a good uh, I, I Sharad, uh, ma heno. I'm blessed, Mary Von Ola, but it's with uh, a dre. Uh, or then, and Gartrevi, we am down there. They're all done. My your colleague from the Uistig Pimpag, a Uistig Uist. I say, see the Tinead emotional young. Uh, now, uh, EV, I have it's our little friend, yeah, a wee darling, our board or um, Sarah and, and a colleague. It's a great pleasure to be back in Amberes, the place I was uh, privileged to call home for three years, between 85 and, and 88, when I was a student here. And indeed, many of my friends today are people who were in college with me at that time uh, and who now live uh, in, in or, or around Cardiff or the towns around Cardiff. They've all been bribed over the years, obviously, consistently to make sure that none of the stories about what I did here <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever get leaked out. There's an old tradition in some parts of the valleys of South Wales. In those villages which moved from being villages where Welsh was spoken to villages where Welsh was understood, particularly in the Neath Valley and the Dilice Valley, where quite often people would go to chapel and they would hear the minister stand up and speak in both Welsh and English at the same time. Sometimes, often, uh, by changing, interchanging words in Welsh and English in the same sentence. Now, I know that simultaneous translation isn't available to us this evening. I'm not going to go quite that far, but I will uh, talk in Welsh about um, particular um, areas of interest uh, when that's appropriate. It's sometimes thought that we in Wales are not great travellers, that we don't like, like travelling very much. And as somebody who ended up half a mile from where I started, I'm not a very good <laughs> example of that. But my wife is Irish, and the Irish have um, great traditions of, of travel and of settling around the world. We know that part of the reason for that is that so many people in the 19th century emigrated internally. They moved from rural Wales into the industrial valleys, into areas like Blennifestiniog to work in the, uh, the slate quarries, and so there wasn't quite the need to uh, move abroad in the same way as the Irish and the Scots did following the, uh, the Highland clearances. And I often think that there's um, much work that could be done in Wales to study the migration patterns of people within Wales and the villages where they, they settled. For example, why is it that Tredegar was settled mainly by people from outside Wales and Rumney down the road was settled by people mainly from within Wales? Why is it at the top of the Ammon Valley that Brynamon, Gwanka Gerwen and, Cung and Cungors, a Welsh-speaking village, is it Tyre Gwaith next door, isn't? Uh, because the people who settled there were in the main Irish or English and uh, they were kept apart from the, uh, from, from the Welsh speakers who lived there. So we have quite a, a tradition in Wales of people moving around and settling in particular parts of Wales that were... Uh, more in keeping with the uh, parts of the world that they'd originally come from. We know, of course, of the great traditions uh, of, and the great movements of people into Wales from countries elsewhere in Europe. And yet, we overlook the fact that the Celts were great travellers. The Celts originated, it said, in, in India. They came across uh, into Europe, uh, settled in, in many of the countries of Europe. It was um, a Celtic king, Brennus, who invaded Rome and uh, went there to the Forum and, uh, and took over the, uh, the city. So we have, we have quite, a, quite a tradition in many ways of, of travel. We also know, of course, about the story of Maddox. Uh, there mm. is a, a sign in a town called Mobile in Alabama which claims that it was on that very spot that Prince Maddox landed and, uh, of course, bequeathed, it is said, Welsh-speaking uh, Native American population who no one's really been able to find. But it's a good story, so why spoil it? It's something I use in the Ryder Cup all the time, <laughs> trying, to, uh, trying to sell Wales. But we also know, of course, that many Welsh people have travelled around the world. We think of great authors like, like Jan Morris, for example. We think of the people like Islin Roberts, who is, uh, of course, mentioned in the exhibition today, somebody who had the nerve uh, to, to hitchhike yeah. in many parts of the world that were, in those days, very distant, very strange to someone like him, very unusual, and yet he came back and by all uh, intents, was able to uh, sit on a park bench in Llanbedr outside Harlech and recount uh, the stories of his tales uh, across the world. 